Hi everyone, this is Humiak and welcome back to the Kiwi Tech Tree Overhaul. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, how Kiwi Tech Tree uh, works with Kerbalism. Now, I'm a recent convert to Kerbalism. Actually, when I started working on this mod uh, back in August, I actually had zero interest in Kerbalism and I was like, that looks way too complicated. Um, you know, I don't, I don't really had no interest, um, but I happened to come across a couple of YouTube series that are using Kerbalism, and I was just really amazed with some of the uh, components and how they work. However, one aspect that I've noticed is that it is still a little bit light on terms of mod support, and so if I was going to get a Kiwi Tech Tree overhaul to work with Kerbalism, you know, I needed to actually create some patches to have a little bit more of a comprehensive, cohesive sort of experience. You know, I didn't really want only some parts to be configured and not others. So where I felt it was necessary, I've actually added custom patches to um, to Kerbalism. And I think, and in some cases I've modified existing patches so they're a little bit more consistent with how parts are placed uh, within Kerbalism. Now, if you took a, took a look at the last video, you will have already seen some of the elements for it that we should generally be familiar with. And uh, obviously, one of the things that I've done right with all of the probes and command modules, I've added in custom hard drive values. Um, so you, you won't see as many of the 500 kilobyte um, capacities for, for your unconfigured uh, command modules. And this is going to be based off of uh, where they come in the tech tree. I've also added a few more upgrades as well. Um, even though I'm playing in sandbox, I forgot to take the box to um, enable hard drive upgrades. But what you'll see is by the end of the game, hard drives are not necessarily going to be a limiting factor. You know, I, you know, as much as I, I enjoy a lot of the Kerbalism gameplay uh, challenges sort of early games some of the aspects of this do you feel like they might get a bit old for a long game and so I try to set up a lot of the configs where they become a little bit less um, headaches um, later on and what you'll see as well is that might also be reflected in terms of engines now what Let's see, we might not actually see it here. We might need to pop open on an engine config here. Now, I've done a couple of things to engines. Now, what you'll see is, well, first, initially, right, because I don't have any upgrades um, enabled in the sandbox mode, ignition failures are actually quite high, you know, for liquid fuel engines at 10%. And, you know, that reflects this sort of idea that, you know, say early engines, like, you know, weren't necessarily engineered to a great standard, you know, and and I think at early game, you know, it's sort of enjoyable to see rockets explode, you know, like maybe the engine doesn't fail and tips over, explodes, you know, and, you know, that's, that's great. But that also gets a bit old because, you know, say by the end, you know, and, you know, you have a really complex mission uh, to Duna, um, you've placed, put a lot of money into it, you may not necessarily and you know I spent several hours or several days designing your part you just want it to work because you know you have work or school the next morning and, and you're really tired you know so upgrades will lower this ignition failure rate the default rate um, to a you know a pretty reasonable level right and the, you know and so you can start having this idea of not necessarily having to rely on high quality upgrades uh, just to get your parts to work um, other aspects, what you'll see is that the rated burn duration is now going to differ, and that's going to be based off of the engine's vacuum ISP. And I adjust for whether or not it's a uh, Hydrolox or a uh, Carolox engine. It, you know, if you really want to get complicated, you can take a look at, at uh, the config files of how I calculated it. But I basically have used uh, Cubic Spline to estimate uh, what this should be, you know, it's not based off of any sort of scientific background, but just sort of, you know, uh, surface engines, right, should have a little bit of a lower burn duration. Now, I've stuck to the stock Kerbalism experience in terms of rated ignitions, um, 
so as I thought that they varied that fairly well and they kind of had, had a decent balance to that. Um, other aspects, let's see, as well, um, we will see, I think most part, it's probably worthwhile talking about science and that, which we can move that engine on, I don't know why I'm taking it off. Um, The science aspect to Kerbalism is what really brought me to Kerbalism. I just really love this idea of science taking a bit longer than just sort of instantly happening, uh, as happens in the English stock game. Now, Kerbalism does support, you know, like the D Magic mods uh, or like the Orbital Science, which is one of my go-to must-have mods. But some of the other mods. Uh, which I've recently come across, like the Codal Aerospace, has a wide variety of science parts um, that I really wanted to get them implemented into a couple space programs. So what I've gone through is I've made patches to, to sort of create all these uh, different um, uh, experiments available. Now, I guess what we won't see, because I don't have upgrades available as well, um, is I don't think that we'll see. Whoops, that's not what I want here in terms of mods. Now I'm thinking about probes. What we'll also see, let's see if I can, I don't think we'll have access to it because they're not unlocked. Um, well, we do see a couple here. Um, that might be because of, because we're in, uh, <coughs> we're in sandbox mode here. I have added a few sort of custom experiments available um, to probes uh, and that's going to in some cases I can't recall quite they might be uh, contingent on some mods being available as well so this is, I think in some cases I've just reappropriated uh, mod science experiments to something that worked across other experiments um, in other cases yeah in terms of total aerospace this is something I've worked on more recently, so I'm going to be most familiar with. Right, we'll see right, that we'll have mods that are available to, or sorry, parts that are able to look at different experiments, right? So in this case, right, this orbital camera system will start off with the ability to just do, to have a film camera experiment. Um, later on in the tech tree, it, you'll have the ability to, to, uh, to do digital cameras, right, with different, um, different, uh, experiments right so in the case for the film camera you know this is going to require you to like it's going to use samples so it's going to require you to return that to Kerbin. Digital camera obviously right is just going to be a transmission and we'll also say have the ability to do digital video as well and all these will then have different rates sizes durations um, and different requirements as well so uh, to help make this uh, experiment or experience a little bit more uh, custom and hopefully a little bit more comprehensive. Um, overall, I think I've added a lot of experiments to the game, so I don't think, again, if you're using Kerbalism uh, with this, I think you'll have a really enjoyable experience and I uh, uh, would love to hear your feedback about uh, how it goes. Okay, so I think uh, with that, I think I don't really have anything more to that I think I need to talk to you about, but yeah, if you do have any questions or comments or concerns, uh, make sure to write in the uh, write in the forums. So thank you so much for listening.